Father, we thank you, we bless you for your sons and daughters who are tuned to this broadcast in this hour. I pray, Father God, that the word that is going to come out tonight will minister to them in a special way to help them to reflect on themselves and see whether they're working with you or not, whether they are the light of their, of their own, whether where they are the shine. Father, help us where we are falling short. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, for this broadcast this evening. I thank God for each and every one of you, and I welcome you, because tonight we're going to carry on in the second part of my last teaching about be the light of your home, or you can also title it, be the shining light wherever God has placed you, wherever God has sent you, and wherever God want you to be. Even when you are deciding yourself to be there, be the shining light. Let the people see in you the hope in Christ Jesus. I want to invite you to go to the book of uh, Titus this evening. So we're going to read uh, uh, from the book of Titus chapter 2, which may be a long text, but uh, uh, it is for our own admonition. Whenever you hear admonition, it means teaching, learning. But you know me always, I ask you, let be like the brethren of Berea. They are keen to learn. They are keen to hear the word of God. And they are keen also to check, verify whether that word is in line with the mind of God, whether that word tally with the God's word. Oh, glory be to God. Always have your Bible, your pen, and your notepad, because what you write today will help you tomorrow, and you will always remember it. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to read from uh, the second chapter of the book of Titus, and Titus is just after Timothy, uh, second book of Timothy, uh, then comes Titus. So it's a long text. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 14. If, if you are ready, please read. But to speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the age may be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience, the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not be given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at all good obedient to their own husband, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded, you know, all showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing in corruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that is, that is of the contrary part, may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not pelloning, but showing all good fidelity. Aha! Pelloning here not to steal by taking things of small value. So that's what it means to, uh, to, to pelloning. But showing all good fidelity. But they may adorn the doctrine of God as Savior in all things. For the grace of God 
that bringeth salvation that appear to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. May you be zealous of good work. May you be zealous of good work. Whatever you do, may you be a producer of good work. Work that are godly. Work that are righteous. Work that appeal in a good conscience. Let not be attracted by the things of the world and carry the godliness in us. My brothers and sisters, as I was uh, saying to you today, I'm going to look at the second part of uh, 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 be the light of your home or be the shining light in your house, in your ministry, in your workplace, wherever God places you, wherever God takes you, let your light shine and never die. Let the people be attracted to your speech, your behavior, and your manners. Let everyone be a reporter of good seeing you. Let the people, when they listen to you, they have a desire to have your manners. That's why Titus is telling old men and old women, he's saying to the old men, the aged men, to be sober, temperate, control your temper. Don't let the temper control you, but you control your temper. Sound in faith. Whenever you hear the sound in faith, these are people, they're not going to be moved by what they hear people saying. They're not going to be moved by what they see. They're going to be moved by the word. For example, my brothers and sisters, you're not going to be moved when they say to you that Satan is destroying people. Or Satan has entered into your neighborhood. Or people are still, all of them are taking drugs. Or, or most of them are getting a, a pregnant with teenage pregnancy. Or all of them are wild. Because you are not moved by that. For the word of God say that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You have to know when you see all this behavior in the neighborhood, you're going to wake up and say what the word says. You're going to check what God said. And because all this behavior are not the behavior of flesh and blood, I mean that the flesh, the body, the physical body. But it is the principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness taking control of the neighborhood. Destroying the young ones because you know that that's the future. We have to have self control. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We cannot allow this body to become a vehicle of wrongdoing, of ungodliness. And what is quite interesting. See, we have to have love. And we have to be patient in life, my brothers and sisters. Men of God, men in the body of Christ, men in the neighborhood, in our community, must be of a sound doctrine, sound teaching, sound, whenever you hear sound, it means that good, good report. Let not somebody, when they look at you, they hear you, they say, oh, not this one. Because at that time, 
We have separated ourselves from God. And when we separate ourselves from God, we begin to live in darkness. Oh, you can tell me, oh, Pastor, I, I go to church every Sunday. No, not every even the demon go to church Sunday. Going to church Sunday is not a standard that you see God. It's not a standard that you will enter into the kingdom of God. But when you go there, let the fruit of your going there be seen, be a light where everybody will be attracted to see or to look into it. But you know yourself, the Bible tells us in the book of uh, uh, Galatians, that there will be none but the fruit. The fruit are produced. Bless the name of the Lord. And he's talking for the whole women. He said, your behavior, you have to be a behavior that is holy. Not false accusers. Not given to much wine, teachers of good things. They want women to be teachers of good things. And mainly, Titus is saying, as that, how do women should also mentor the young ones? Not always given to wine, to cigarette, to tattoos, to injecting drugs in the body. God doesn't want us to do that. So remember last week I talked to you about the three areas that we have to be the light of our homes or the shining light of our community. We talked about the speech, the way we talk. That's why we have it here in verse 8. He said that let your instruction be sound and fit and wise and wholesome, vigorous and irrefutable and above censure, so that the opponent may be put to shame, finding nothing dis discrediting or evil to say about us. Sound speech. When I talk, my enemies or the people around me will not use it to discredit me or to put the name of Jesus Christ into disrepute. The way I talk, the way I present myself, the tone of my voice, count a lot, the manners and the behavior. So I'm going to build on that number four from the previous teaching or number one today is our conduct. Our conduct tune with the word of God that we may act consistently. My brothers and sisters, we have to be consistent and we have to be coherent. Consistent and coherent. We're not the people who change every time. We don't change like the weather. We don't change like season. I am coherent. This is what I believe and this is what I'm committed and this is what, what I, I'm going to stand before the Lord. Not when you are with a, a sinners or you are with your friend, you act in a different way. But when you come where we are, you, you, you act a different way. No. You cannot be inconsistent in life. Whenever I am, wherever I am, whoever I am with, they have to know I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is my priority. I focus on him. I emulate Christ wherever I am. Your conduct matter. Your conduct matter. That's why the Bible is telling us here that you have to be discreet. You have to be self-control. You have to have self-control. Keep your home safe. Keep your home the place where the Lord 
He's happy to come in. Let your home be the home that attracts Christ. Your home full of prayer. Your home whereby everything in there. You have the songs of the saint. You have the word of God. And the way you relate to one another in your home is attractive. You cannot be in your home a bad manager and you think coming in the house of God you're going to be a good manager no I'm talking mainly to you intercessors you can't have a messy home dirty but you're always there in the church what are you doing there your true intercessory behavior or conduct should start at all do you pray at all for people do you pray for your wife? Do you pray for your husband? Do you pray for your children? Do you set the good atmosphere in the house? Is your husband pleased to stay home? Is your wife pleased to stay home? That's going to determine your lightning nature, your shining nature, because where you are, Love is there, peace is there, patience is there, and desire, the presence of God is there. But when we are not good in our behavior, in our conduct from home, let not deceive ourselves. We will be in the church pretenders. We will be pretending that in fact, here, God is not in us. We want to show the world that we are of God, but in fact we are not. And that's what Christ is saying. You have me in your lips, but in, my, in your heart, I'm not there. Number two, our rule, our rule. It's important to have a rule, my brothers and sisters. I like when people talk, talk about Discipline. You have to self-discipline. Don't wait anyone to come and tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it. Be more consistent within yourself. Be more disciplined within yourself. Be hard with yourself before somebody else makes you to behave in a respectful manner. Respect yourself. Are rules or rules rule with the authority of heaven that we may have consecratingly. We may have or we may be separated from anything else so we can focus to the giver of life, the author and the finisher of our life, the one who gave himself as a price the ransom, so you and I can be who we are today. And it's important when we look at the, uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, when we look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, what is he saying? Verse 7 is saying that, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach, and the snare of the devil. Furthermore, it must have a good reputation and be well taught of by those outside the church. Lest he become involved in slander and incur reproach and fall into the devil's trap. My brother's reputation is dear. Is it better than ruby and diamonds? Once you lose your reputation, whatever you can have, no matter how bad or how good you fought for it, once you've lost your reputation, that's it. That's why my Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, say a good name is better than rubies. Mean that a good reputation, a good report about you. Maintain that standard because it will make you the light 
of your home. It will make you the light of your society. It will make you the light of your ministry. Wherever you go, people will use you as an example. You say, can you see, brother, so, so, and so. Remember, a reputation, you can build it over life, over the time. But if you do not maintain it and be consistent and coherent, and you lose it, it's difficult to rebuild that reputation. That's why Timothy and Titus is talking, saying, be of good report. Sometimes ask yourself, if I'm not there, what will the people say about me? Remember Jesus Christ in Matthew 16, he sat down the disciple. He asked them, what do people say about me? And then he moved and said, okay, I've heard what people say about me, but now, how about you? What do you say about me? Brothers and sisters, I appeal unto you tonight. The gospel we preach is the gospel of peace and love. It's the gospel of truth. Everything we, we speak to you is based on the foundation of justice and truth. If our conduct, we don't have rules, we behave anyhow, we will lose our reputation. We will not be a more role model. Be a role model where you are. Let the people be thirsty to do what you do. Let the people emulate you. Let the people copy you, copy. You become the example. Oh, glory be to God. Number three. Your office. How do you manage your office? The office here is not only in the church. The office is also in your house, at your workplace, in various areas where you apply the function, the skills, the talent, the knowledge God has given you. Our office dominated with the beauty of faithfulness that we may live blamelessly. Oh, glory be to God. Aspire, my sisters, aspire, my brothers, to live a life of being unblameable. Let not act the way our forefather Adam behaved. When he fell in his responsibility and authority, he shifted the blame to God and saying, the woman you gave me. God never given Adam Eve. Adam himself made that choice. God only presented Eve, paraded Eve in front of Adam. Let not be somebody where they will poke a finger and say, look at them. They talk about Jesus, but look at their behavior. They talk about Jesus, but they are pocketing people. They talk about Jesus, but they are always drunk. They talk about Jesus, they can't pay debt. They talk about Jesus, but they have not time, good time management. They're always late in their activities. They talk about Jesus, but they are not good creditors. They're always in debt. I can't pay the debt. Meanwhile, we know that the borrower is the servant of the lender. But we still do that. And what? First Timothy chapter 3. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 3. He's saying here, my brothers and sisters, that if you have a time, please read the Timothy in your home. He's saying this in verse 8. It reads, Likewise, 
must be, must the deacon be grave, mean that, that the deacons must be worthy of respect. Not double tongued. You know, double tongued <laughs> means that he has double language. One minute he says yes, the next minute he says no. One minute he says, Oh, yeah, I'll do it, but the next minute he's not there. Oh, he said, I'll be there, count on me. And then you come the, the, the day of the appointment, they are not there. Oh, they say, Oh, I never miss my rendezvous. But you check on them. They are just cheap talkers. And they never commit themselves in what they say. Number nine. Oh, one of the things also, uh, the, the Apostle Paul is talking to, to Timothy saying, don't be greedy of a filthy looker. Don't be given too much wine. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let those also first be proved let them use the office of a deacon be found blameless. If you're going to be a deacon, if you're going to be an intercessor, if you're going to be the choir leader, if you're going to be the altar worker, if you're going to be a nasher, if you're going to be the Sunday teacher or the Sunday school supervisor, or you're going to be a prayer leader in the hands of God, I appeal to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let it be blameless. And when we are blameless, we will be able to fulfill the office. The last thing I leave with you, my time is gone, is a relationship. A relationship in life must be adjusted with the direction of the Holy Spirit. That we may show we have received the Spirit fully. I'm going to run very quickly before we close so we know it. If you go to Colossians, if you go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. I'll read only that chapter before I close. Verse 17, he said, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Oh, glory be to God. I love that. My sisters, my brothers, those of you watching me from wherever you are, whenever a tax, a task has been given to you, a piece of work has been given to you, or a project you have to fulfill, do it consciously with all your heart as you do it unto the Lord. Don't say that. Don't think that you're doing it for many. No. If I ask you to do something, do it as you do it unto the Lord. Don't do it because I've asked you. No. Because at the end of the day, we're going to give an account for it. Mm -hmm. Remember in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it's very clear. Let me, let me read it for you so I can close with Ecclesiastes. If you find it, please say amen from where you are. I just want to read this before I close. I know my time is gone, but bear with me in a minute. I'm going to find it. The last chapter of Ecclesiastes. Very clear. In chapter 12, verse 13, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's the will of God. Do it unto the Lord. Whenever you've been given a task, whether at home, whether at work, whether in the ministry, do it as you do unto the Lord. Do it with your perfect heart, with all the skills, with all the talent. 
perfect it as if you were making it what we call a five-star hotel. You know when you go to the five-star hotel, it's spotless, clean, the smell is nice, you feel like you better dwell there. And if you can do it in your home, you can do it in the ministry, you can do wherever you go, you will be the light of the world. Remember, through Christ who strengthened us, we can do more and beyond. We can expect far. That's it for me. It's been a plan, pleasant pleasure as well as a privilege to share this word with you. And I believe this word will minister to you as you replay it and share it because we want to walk before God blameless. We want to walk before God without anyone finding us, finding a fault in us or catching us or setting a trap so we can fall in. Let us be role model, good example. The way we talk is matter. Our body language matter. Our behavior matter. Our conduct matter. What rules us matter. And where you stand as son or daughter of the Most High God, your office matter. And I believe as we do so, we will shine wherever we go. I know my time is gone, but before I go, I want to give somebody the opportunity to give their life unto the Lord Jesus Christ. All you have to say, say this few words after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the eternal son of God. I believe that you died and rose again. And I believe that you are sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me. Pray for me, O oh Lord, for I am a sinner, that I be forgiven of all my sin, and be accepted in the bosom of the Father. I make a decision right now to accept you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If then you are born again, spirit filled, find yourself a Bible teaching ministry in your locality and submit yourself to that, to the leadership, to the authority. And at the appointed time, God will use you. Don't forget, it's not over until God says it's over. God bless you. And we see you on Sunday. You join us Sunday. Uh, 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 10.30, 11 o'clock we will be live to share the word of God with you. We love you and we pray for you that at the appointed time you will be God's ambassador. God bless you.